Let's take a look at the local area on the sectional chart. This is the Greenville Downtown Airport. This is where we'll be flying in and out of. And notice that the Greenville Downtown Airport is denoted in blue. Blue means there's a control tower versus magenta, there is no control tower. Also, note that there are little tick marks on the side and the bottom of the airport. That means that this airport has fuel services. This beacon, or this star on the top of the airport right here, means that there's a beacon light. The beacon is similar to a lighthouse that you would find near the ocean, and the beacon light will flash white, green, white, green for a civilian airport, and white, white, green, white, white, green for a military airport. The beacon light will come on automatically from sunset to sunrise, and it will also come on if the weather becomes instrument conditions. Because the airport is in blue, the information that goes with the airport is also in blue. This is the Greenville Downtown Airport, and all airports have three letters or number identifiers. So our identifier is Golf Mike Uniform, GMU. Next, the next line says CT, that stands for Control Tower, and you would put 119.9 .9 into your communication radio to talk to the control tower. This star beside that frequency means that the tower is a part-time tower. It closes at night. You would have to reference the airport facility directory to see what time the tower is in use. This C, this bold C in the circle, represents CTAF, Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. When the tower is closed, then this same frequency becomes a common traffic advisory frequency where the pilot would simply announce their position in the area for any other pilots to hear them. Next is the ASOS, Automated Surface Observation Service. You'd put 127.07, we don't have the third digit in our airplane, so you can ignore that, that five, but 127.07 .07 is the frequency you would use to listen to the weather here at the airport. On the third line is the elevation. This airport is 1,048 feet above sea level. Next, there's an L. The L means that the airport has runway lights at night. The little tiny star by the L means that the pilot can turn those lights on if necessary with their push to talk button. You would click your push to talk seven times in order to turn the lights on and to high intensity and you'd click that seven times within five seconds. If you click it five times in five seconds, they will go to medium intensity, and three times in five seconds, it will go to low intensity. Next is a number five four. That represents the length of the longest runway here at the airport. The longest runway is 5,400 feet long. The next frequency, 122.95, is known as a unicom frequency. That frequency is used if you want to talk to the people in the building and ask about fuel services or a rental car or anything like that, you would talk to the Unicom. Finally, we have RP1928. RP means right-handed pattern for those two runways. Normal traffic pattern makes left-hand turns, but since this is abnormal, they marked it on the chart as right-handed pattern for runway 19, and 19 faces this way. So if you were going to go around the pattern, you would take off and fly the departure leg and then you'd make a right-hand turn for your crosswind leg, a right-hand turn for your downwind leg, a right-hand turn for base, and then finally right-hand turn for final. The same is true for runway 28, which faces in this direction. Um, this airspace is uh, noted by the blue dashed line, and the top of our airspace on the chart says 3,500, but because there's a Class C airspace right beside us, that uh, is dominant in regards to our airport, and their, their outer shelf starts at 3,100. That means that in this area right here, this airspace goes up to 3,100 until you get just outside of the dominant Class C airspace, and then this section would go up to 3,500. Also, you can see Donaldson Airport is also a Class D airspace, and you can see where theirs is outlined here.